Can we just shut up and let this play? Can like we, some, do we have to talk today? It's like some baby making music. Oh my god, yeah, I'm a, I feel half pregnant already. <laughs> I had to quote the great Ron Burgundy to me. <laughs> yeah, Alice Man. in Chains and Rainier Fog. Today's the drop day. Oh. Uh, some of us got up at 4 a.m. and uh, started downloading it. And before you start thinking, what are you fucking crazy? Well, I get up at four. So yeah, I, like that, that, like that, was, that's your profession. It's not like I was camping out or anything. My, otherwise ass, it'd been midnight. my ass is off work and I'm a night worker and I was up at 8 a.m. to get this motherfucker. And my God, I've been up ever since listening to it. If you are at all an Alice in Chains fan of any kind, I, and I'm talking like casual that you go back to like, well, like a uh, you know, uh, rooster, you know. Um, <laughs> I love that rooster song. <laughs> you probably need to pick this one up. And. You know, and I mean, I advocate all the time, like, hey, buy this one, buy that one, buy this one. And if you were wanting to get down to the real honesty of the whole situation, I buy two albums a year, maybe three. Yeah. Four if it's a good year. Now, are we talking hard copies or I'm digital? talking the, well, I haven't bought a hard copy of anything in a long time because where the fuck are you going to? Since uh, Elevati, I think, when you got that in the mail. Maybe, yeah. It's been a while. I mean, outside of the various things you get for your profession, but. Like yeah. something you actively went and purchased. Right. Uh, yeah, as far as buying a hard copy, God, it seems like I, I bought some more shit since then, but I but yeah. I don't know. But generally, digital is the way it's right. going to go. I don't buy a lot of shit because I can get it off of YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. And, here, and the reason is, is uh, hey, man, if I'm just going to be sitting around drinking some beers and hanging out with folks, I'm not paying that much attention to the music, not as much as I used to. You got the world jukebox back there. But if I buy it, well, God damn it, it's a good record. Yeah. I, I bought Heartless by uh, Paul Bearer. That was the last digital yeah. full copy I think I bought. Probably. I think I might have said I bought the Mastodon. I didn't buy the Mastodon. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, probably the best decision. Well, and, but <clears throat> on top of that, the uh, I'm dealing with an ancient piece of equipment. I have an iPod that I bought in 2010. So eight years removed. And the thing's got like two gig, three gig left on it, which sounds like a lot. Uh, yeah, because yours is a touch where they yeah. sacrifice the space for functionality. Yeah, there's, a, there's a 32 gig iPod touch. It's kind of what my Shit. yeah, what what my conveyance of music used to be. And then, but I kind of quit. I mean, I still use it for like podcasts and shit. Right. Uh, but uh, but anyway, the um, oh, there we go. Speaking of speaking of yeah, <laughs> people like commented on some of my comments on Twitter today about how great this fucking record is. So. That's the way that goes. Oh, and then my brother, Daryl, really? Asshole. God damn it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's start over. <laughs> but, um, Wipe it clean. We're done. Um, but, but I don't buy that much music. There's not a reason to. Right. Well, until something like this comes out. Rainier Fog. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's the best record, the best rock record I have listened to from beginning track to end track. Twenty-two years. Oh shit! Because I know you'd mentioned at least a decade. I'm like that. I can agree I, with I that. Said, I said way over a decade because I, I I wasn't yeah. sure. But in being closer, you know, introspection, rock records, eh, early two thousands, not really a big, you know. Wasn't wow. the big big breeding ground for great rock and roll. I sure. have to go back to the nineties. I have to go back to like an STP release. Sure. Like when grunge was big. Yeah. I mean, it's, cause it's certainly not Pearl Jam. Right. <laughs> I mean, 10, yeah. hey, even after that. Bye, 10 yeah. versus, eh, that's all right. Yeah, 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 it like kind of gets a little dark after the that. gradual decline of like, oh, I found the door to the outhouse. Oh, there's the shitter. Yeah. I actually <laughs> saw a review where a guy had the balls to mention Pearl Jam and the, on in, this a, in, a, in, a, in a better light as than Alice in Chains currently. There, man, there are some retarded people on there planet Earth. There really are. And, you know, well. And, hey, if, yeah, by the way, if you're listening to this and you are retarded, I'm not really trying to call you out individually. I'm just saying there are a lot of people just like you out there in the yeah. world. So don't feel like you're alone. That's right. Uh, but, uh, well, we'll get into that shit. Um, well, we're kind of already in. I know. Shit. Yeah. We're like just I jump mean, balls. It, it's tough to not talk about it right yeah, off the bat. And I, and I think that we're not doing it. I think we're doing it. You know what, Daryl? God damn it. You see, there he is. He, I, I, that's yep. it. I'm, I'm turning the volume yep. on my That's phone. right. Fuck this. All Privileges right. are cut. That's it. We're, we're not even going to Austin, but we're going to go and we're going to take photos of us in an empty seat. <laughs> Thing, wish you were here. Oh, wait. No, we don't. Uh, oh, man. Shit. No, but, uh, but man, I got to say the, um, the breakdown of the whole thing, it's got every tone that you that you used to hear. Yeah. From Allison Chains. The one minus 
is that you don't have Lane Staley, but he's fucking dead. And he's been dead for all intents and purposes since 98. Yeah. Realistically, Ever since, since 2002. Uh, dead came out. I think that was the last song they did together. You know, and I mean, and, and so, yeah, you can make an argument that, hey, he had more of the, ah, cut. yeah, you can make that argument. Well, it was back in the day, Lane was the singer. Right. And then Jerry was the backup. Now we got it where Jerry's kind of the main, but not like full on. William Duvall in this album is almost an equal. I, and he also plays guitar. You know, that's the whole thing that I think this is where some people have it wrong is that, it, look, if you're one of these, um, you know, no lane, no chains kind of person, well, you're living in the wrong era. If, realize that and move on. Right. Yeah. Fuck off and uh, leave this, go, go this and play, gym for the just, people just, that appreciate just, it. Just keep playing. Just just put dirt on loop and just listen. You yeah. Know, go, jam go on, rooster on, on repeat and do your thing. You know, but the thing is, if you can r- appreciate a band's evolution in the right way. Yeah. Now, having said that, I'm not usually customarily a fan of a band evolving. The case in point is Rush. With every record Rush would put out, God damn, it'd take me a year, year and a half on some of them. Before to you get could, around. like really get in there yeah. and appreciate it for what it potentially was, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, that's really more the rule than the exception until here lately. Now, Hardwired came out, and I went, Jesus Christ, this is this is a work of yeah. art is what this is. Right. You know? And, and, you know, uh, Alice in Chains kind of did something similar to what Metallica did with Hardwired. This is almost like a library, a rather condensed library, but a library of every sound they've ever created since 1989. And worked it all in, yeah. and it weaves in and out of a thematic throughout the entire fucking record. I mean, not yeah. to break it down too hard, but that's the thing. You, Because I hear a guitar tone, I go, God damn, I haven't heard Jerry do that one since a solo project thing yeah. he was doing. Dude fucking you breaks know? out an acoustic guitar on Fly. And it sounds like Jar Flies. Yeah, I mean, it, like, I mean, it's not a Jar Flies copy, but the essence of that album is there when he plays that guitar. And at the root of everything, I'm a guitar player, so more guitars is better than less guitars. You goddamn right. And you got William Duvall, who, frankly, fucking brings it. And he's yeah. and he's got and he's got he's got a tone that I can't really put a finger on, but I've heard, but I, I, it's it's similar to the things I've heard. Yeah, you know, not necessarily. I, I was like, man, it sounds just like this. No, no, it sounds like some other things in a similar nature. I mean, some of that. One of his leads that he whips out on here is really, really solid, and it's toward the end of it's like it's the second, or third, or last track on here. And I think, God dang, that is that has got '90s written all over it, and, and it's just really crunchy and and screamy at the same time. Yeah, it's kind of a real tough kind of guitar tone to really kind of master unless you know what the fuck you're doing. Right. And oh, my Lord. Yeah. William dude. Duvall is not getting the credit he deserves. I don't think I don't think so. I, I think he is from hardcore fans. though, And that's really all that matters. That's exactly right. Because those are the ones that are going to go to your shows. They're the yeah. ones going to buy your records. They're See September you know. th- six, motherfuckers. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, and and the harmonies are tighter on this than any Alice in Chains record to date. Yeah, and you know, I'll I'll be honest, after hearing the three singles, the one you know, Never Fade and uh So Far Under, I was a little concerned. I was like, maybe I, I hope they don't overuse the harmonies. I was almost afraid that was but see, and then was, we got a whole album of it, but not only did they do it wonderfully, they've done it better than they used to back in the day. I was concerned. I thought they were going to pull the Hollywood thing on us and give us all the good shit like they do in the trailers for movies. And then you're left with a bunch of shit you don't care for. Fuck that. The best song wasn't even one of the early releases, in my opinion. My opinion. Yeah, well, like you were saying earlier, the one you know as of right now seems to be the standout track, but that is going to fade away. You know, Red Giant is probably probably my favorite track on there. that one and yeah. the one you know but the one you know is great because of the fact we've been jamming that for yeah one and, month that, now, and that's a, a month. solid opener to an album too. oh my god it, it sets really sets a goddamn tone yeah. yeah but i mean but red giant has got those variety of gar- guitar tones that you kind of would catch from the pre um you know uh, well really actually from the pre staley death you know yeah jerry cantrell showcases his tone really greatly in that in that particular track William Duvall's guitar parts aren't as up front, but his fucking vocals are. Yeah. You know? And, and when he's not really doing the whole vocal thing, the dude is doing some legit shredding. I wonder if there are videos of him just playing guitar. I'd like to see just 
what he's rocking, you know? I, there's got to be. It's the fucking, it's yeah. 2018. It's the, the, the internet's got. That's right. I'm sure someone wanted to interview him, just had him play guitar for a couple minutes. But, uh, yeah, it's, man, it's, it is the, the best, the best record I've heard. God, it's rock record. Yeah. Since, since the late nineties. Yeah. Cause really like metal and it's the same thing with Metallica for you. You're kind of post black album Metallica. I, and you could even say fucking post Saint Anger. Yeah, I, I was a casual Metallica fan right. at best. Yeah, Black Album, yeah. Uh, Ride the Lightning, but not really one of my favorites. I, you're not going to sit around and jam the whole thing. You're going to play Ride the Lightning over and over and over again. You've got to be in a certain kind of mood. Yeah. But, like, I mean, and not a, good, not a good one when you're hanging you know, out with pals. And I would still say I'm, I'm a casual Metallica <laughs> fan, although I appreciate the shit out of Hardwired. Fuck yeah. yeah. But this, even with Hardwired, there's a couple tracks I could do without. Yeah, you know? sure. They're, they're, it's fine. As a record, it's, it's fine. It's even great. And to have just like two or three tracks that are a little, you know, less than desirable on a double album is pretty goddamn good. You know, I mean, Paul Bear is Heartless, which, by the way, that one's the other buy. You have to get in for that one. There's one track on there I, I would be okay if it wasn't on the record. Because then the whole record would fucking just blow your fucking mind. Yeah, add like an um, extra 30 seconds to a minute on some other tracks. Yeah, maybe. You know, but this... This is the man. I have to go back to my youth to find a record that I thought, and and I was a dummy back then because I thought, oh well, yeah, every track on one particular record I thought was fucking amazing. Yeah. And it was fucking Power Slave by Iron Maiden because right. I was a teenager. But I thought every track on that record was the best thing I'd ever heard. Well, and then Pearl Jam's Ten came along, and I kind of, with the exception one or two things, I was like, yeah, this is fucking perfect too. Fuck that. I got to say, Rainier Fogg is, there is not a bad song. There's not even a mediocre or a, man, I wish they'd have left this off. Yeah, or, there's no weak spots. And, 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 and again, like you said earlier, people that bitch about this album are cunts. <laughs> they are just looking for right. a reason to hate this album because Lane Staley is dead. Lane Staley's been dead for about 15 fucking years. We need to move on. They waited. I mean, they were broken up in 98 basically right lane passed away they were inactive for a solid five four or five years after that well even then it was jerry cutting his own shit really yeah it was jerry mike inez and uh sean uh i can't remember his kenny name. kenny sean kenny uh playing with like you know guest acts right and that was even kind of a slow build to what black is way to blue was gonna be but you go back to that album and then you listen to rainer fog and it's like god damn Damn, I'm glad they came back because eventually we were going to get to this point. You know, and for the people that do have a problem, it's like, well, here's the problem I've got with this. Well, you know, you're you're trying to be clever. You're trying to find something that's not a there. A goddamn cynic. And that's where it. there's it, no need for one. Look at me. I'm the one that doesn't like this. Aren't I great? Now, if you listen to this one part here, you'll hear Kenny uh, hit a cymbal crash where he didn't mean to. I mean, Go one, fuck one asshole gave it like I was reading the review and they said that uh, it was it was great for everything except that he thought the drums were a little flat. But that's what they do nowadays. Fuck that. The drums aren't <laughs> flat. Get a better sound system, I, I was just about asshole. to say, yeah, get, get some better <laughs> headphones, bitch. Yeah. You know, a, a, a complaint I heard was overproduction. It's too perfect. Yeah, well, okay, and there's the thing. Because then people are like, man, it doesn't sound like back in the days when they doesn't were... doesn't sound like lot, 90s grunge. A lot more raw. Well, yeah, raw well, and Canada's like... Because it's 2018, motherfucker. You don't have to sound raw in this day and age. Yeah. It's, it's another bitchy complaint. You know, and then uh, another one. Uh, yeah, hey, maybe next time be more aggressive on some. Yeah, fuck off. These Are you tell? I I fucking hear a lot of aggression. In there's this there's more aggression to this record than anything they've done. Yeah, in, I the mean, last a two. lot of serious. I mean, there's. I guarantee you, there's more aggression in the than music di than dinosaurs than, or yeah. The, oh, especially yeah. Uh, that or a Black Is Way to Blue is still pretty mellow. Yeah, this is a fucking. This is a hard rock album. With influences from everything in the back catalog of Alice in Chains. I don't give a fuck how many skulls or hot wet kisses Rolling Stone gave it. Well, I think a Rolling Stone has their interns write all the uh, reviews now because uh, they're pretty poorly written. Um, and and they fucking mouth breathing cousins. Literally don't know what they're talking about. But anyway. What's the name um, of the guy that wrote that goddamn review? Uh, Dick Penisman? <laughs> That's something like that. <laughs> Ah, uh, shit, man. Yeah, no, and and my brother Daryl, we give him a lot of shit, but yeah, he, uh, yeah, I love the guitar tones. Uh, you know, I mean, the the tones are fucking 
incredible. Yeah. Now, I, the thing is, Jerry Cantrell, I've always maintained, had the best guitar tones anyway. Period. Yeah, yeah great period. style, great tone. Man, you go and throw it in with, into a mix of what, uh, you know, what you have going on with Duval and what's going on through the rhythm section out of Alice in Chains, and, and it's cranking out nothing but hot shit Damn in, right. in the best way possible. Yeah, it's... There's, I mean, I don't know what else they could have done to make this better. You can't. I, I think at a certain I, I point. I think they nailed it. The the, the complaints are going to be uh, on the production side. Oh, you know, I'm a little overproduced or Yeah, those or harmonies are too or, perfect. Yeah. It's, like, if you listen to the harmonies on Facelift, they're perfect. They're perfect. Sure. They're a little raw just because of the recording style, but they're perfect. Well, and on top of that, the technology is different. The technology... Yeah has changed a hundredfold and 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 sound recording technology between now we can we could put out better shit off of the our daw than they yeah. were probably putting out back in the late 90s yeah this is a little bastard here right so you know it's uh but anyway but buy it it's it's rainy or fog if you don't want to buy it, hey that's fucking fine uh, you don't have to buy the, on the YouTube best for record. nothing you don't have to buy the best record in 2018 that's fine yeah you can listen to the best record for free if you want if you're if you're that way but God, if you if this is your you buy an album a year, make this the album. Yeah. Tool ain't coming out. If you bought <laughs> APC, <laughs> we're, my we're pretty apologies. sure it's gonna be twenty nineteen now, yeah. That's the crazy thing. This album came out the same year as APC's return, and we're we've talked more about Rainier Fog in one day than we have APC's new album since it came out. Because that one's a flawed album. It is. There are some things I don't, I'm not a huge fan of. APC has a tendency of being getting it, a little a little too groovy for me. Yeah, not and it came out, but it came out as the days progressed. The listeners are like, wait, eh, I don't know if I dig that or not. Right. Just like certain parts of it. Talk Talk is a is a good jam. That one, that was probably the, the, that was the one flawless track that yeah, they have Yeah, that's probably that. the best track on the album. But now this came out, it's like, God damn, I don't need... I don't even need a tool album this year. Right, I'm good. I'm good till 2019. So thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Doctor Jerry, and uh, yes. getting us up, yes. get us healing through, us through right. 2018, and you know. So your your favorite track is probably Red Giant. <sighs> right now it is, yeah. but God, you know. But the fucking thing about it is, and and it, what feels weird to me is the, um, it, you know, obviously because uh, the one you know is, it's a great track. So far under, it's fucking still, or never fade either. I mean, I know, man. those <laughs> were the early releases. Those were the right. early ones that came out. I was like, shit. But even, you know, you start looking. Drone is probably. Yeah, Drone's um, my favorite. Yeah, Drone and Red Giant are, God, man. And Drone and drone and Red Giant do kind of seem like brother tracks. They're kind of a point counterpoint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, All I Am closes the album. Now, that one is. Um, the reason I like that one is because it's kind of a callback to what they kind of used to do. Yeah, it's it's like a nutshell callback, kind of in is, my opinion. Yeah. Uh, all the mellow, moody tracks off of Sap and Jar of Flies are in the song. And it's a seven-minute closer that I would put up right up there with a plea for understanding as far as just emotional punch. Sure. But I think you have to have that initial connection with the band for it to work. And which is why I think that you probably dig that a little more than I yeah, do. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I'm, yeah, I'll admit I was kind of late to the dance on Alice in Chains primarily because of the fact that I had other shit going on in grunge. I mean, I was right. really uh, a band that didn't like to be labeled as a grunge band. And that was STP. You know, I mean, I was kind of an adherent of theirs and, and caught their live shows and. You know, in Pearl Jam with their first record and the eh, second one, yeah, third, you know, <laughs> it just goes just up descent there. into insanity, you know. And, and I mean, and even, I mean, realistically, Soundgarden was probably, I, I mean, really, Alice in Chains was probably fifth or sixth on my list of grunge bands. And that's low enough on the totem pole to not really give a fuck. Yeah, or or to, or to have passing interest. Yeah, unless know. they were with a band you were digging on time. Like I don't, I don't think they ever toured with STP because I think they were both kind of big at the same time. Yeah, right? no, STP had weird fucking touring mates too. So yeah, because they were always one like to wear the alternative banner. They had <laughs> in Amarillo. They had Cheap Trick open for them. Shit. STB, yeah. God damn, was that when like Cheap Trick was on the like the downswing or something? Yeah, well, they've been on the downswing since like '79, but yeah. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> damn, I didn't realize that. Well, okay, 80, 85, 84, 85, but yeah, but still, yeah, they, but they, they, I've I've seen those assholes live more than anybody because wow. they have got a tendency or had not now, thank God, 
a tendency of like, oh, somebody's got a hole in their tour. Hey, guess what? They got a hot album out right we got, now. And we a got lot Rick people- Nielsen and a shitload of Marshall Stacks. Damn, they're <laughs> like the uh, the mud vein for me of concerts. Every time I went to a hard rock concert, and I know I probably said this before, but every time I went to a hard rock concert in Lubbock, I've been to like seven. Five of them, Mudvayne, were there. Wow. And they were not the reason why I went. God damn, man. <laughs> But they just well, were always you know, there. But, I mean, that is a cheap trick. Was I mean, I, I've seen them uh, one, two, three, th- at least four times, probably five. And any time you're like, I'm here to see Cheap Trick? Never. <laughs> the, the, the very first time, I was like, hey, that's cool. Cheap Trick's opening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've heard of them. <laughs> yeah, No, no, I was well aware. You yeah. know, I mean... Kind of back when I was a small child, you know, Dream Police was kind of the shit, you know. Oh, I mean, man, but, yeah. You know, <clears> but, uh, God, man, I just, uh, you know, and even before, actually, uh, they're uh, in, the, what was that one? It was black and white on one side and color on the other vinyl. Uh, live at Budokan, probably, you know. I, I mean, there, there are some things to love about Cheap Trick. The problem is, by the time I got to concert going age, and they were, yeah, they, they were putting out shit like the flame and stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh well. So, uh, Any, so um, how the so how how the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, eh? Good day. Uh, I do want to say one more okay. quick thing about Rainier Fog. Um, I don't think people that are hardcore Lane Staley fans should stay away from this album. If anything, th- this is. I I think it's the ultimate fucking tribute to Lane. If you ask me. The fact that Alice in Chains is still going and they've been able to put out an album that will stand up with their old shit and, and surpass some of it. I, it. I have it between Dirt and Facelift. I have it below Dirt and above Facelift, and I'm fairly certain it will fluctuate that yeah, top I, spot. I, yeah, and now, granted, it's just opening. It's, it's the release day, but I've got the top, but that was just that's because Yeah, that's, I, I know what excitement of a new album is versus what a really good album is. Right. I, I kind of had that question with Hardwired a couple of days later. Went back and listened to it and found like, eh, I'm not a big fan of that, but still the rest of it's goddamn metal. This is just a great album. Yeah, there's there's really nothing wrong with it. Yeah, now in the days to come, am I going to find the occasional like, eh, there's that. Maybe, but I doubt it. That's the thing, because everything transitions really, really well. Right. About the, Even in the middle of Red Giant, I started thinking, all right, this is kind of starting to kind of settle in. To a particular groove, but then it goes yeah, it's fucking a crazy. a lot of time signature changes on this album. Yeah. Not to get too fucking technical about it, but it'll be going like real sludge, grunge, doomy, and then all of a sudden have like a real 4-4 four, four upbeat, kind of like sun's out and you're getting a little bit of relief kind of tone. Yeah. Now, I think a lot of your hardcore fans are probably not going to like two tracks. And the reason why is because they're... <laughs> I don't know if I want to call them happy, but they're uh, they're definitely, or at least one of them anyway, is fucking certainly is, is happier. It's 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 kind of a it would it would probably get radio play if radio programmers weren't a bunch of assholes. Yeah. Uh, the the track maybe kind of shocks me a little bit in the fact that it has got a little bit of a happier kind of a bent to it. Right. Fly kind of has its moments where there's there's not as many negative, you know, uh, and you know, minor chords. I mean, it doesn't have a negative bent to it. It's got minor, you know, mostly all major chords and things of that yeah. nature. And it's the first track that has the acoustic coming out. Right. And it comes on right after Red Giant. Right. You, you, you come out with probably the most ball busting song on the album. And then you fucking smooth things out a little bit. It's it's a great choice. I, you know, and I think that's the whole thing, because if you buy the record, the re- what you can do with it, I don't know, if I, I guess I aged myself saying record, but um, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you call it now, because it's like a digital collection. If you buy this digital collection. Be a, <laughs> but um, but it the the dynamic is very much at front of mind of what they're doing. And it would not surprise me when we see them live fucking be ready they may play track one through you know all the way through the fucking end based solely upon because of the uh the dynamic they have is so important there's a lot of songs on here i'd be really bummed out if they didn't play like uh, i mean i'm gonna leave like damn i wish i wonder what this song would have sounded like live i'm just saying be prepared that they may they they may might play the thing track one through the end live 
walk off, come back out for uh, kind of an encore and do fucking do like a half dozen well, classic tracks. Maybe if we're lucky, you know, maybe they yeah. might they might do Rooster and maybe Nutshell. Maybe I don't know. They might not even play Nutshell. Who knows? Well, I'll be a little upset. If play <laughs> nutshell. But I, uh, I got some reviews up here. Not that we give a fuck, but uh, all music gave four stars. Out of four? Out of, out of, out of five. Oh, they can go fuck themselves. They're wrong. Uh, yeah. Uh, Consequence of Sound gave it a B minus. Wrong. B minus for their butthole being wrapped around their skull while they're listening. Pop Matters gave it a seven out of ten. Wrong. Pop Matters. Well, there you go. What what did the uh, what did the hip hop site of uh, uh, in, uh, ignition dot com give? No, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a website called the Music gave it four and a half. Eh, I'll, uh, I, I four think and a half. That, Good, I, yes. I think that's fair. Well, if you don't want to give something a perfect score, okay. Yeah, Rolling Stone two and a half stars. Go fuck yourself. Rolling Stone is. How the fuck are they even still in publication? I have no idea. They're right there hand in hand with the goddamn newspapers. Who are, <laughs> who are the harness makers of the automobile age? I mean, <laughs> fucking Rolling Stone. You know, the last time I had a copy of Rolling Stone, I didn't buy it. I didn't pay for it. Uh, an ex-girlfriend did. I had Kit Harrington on the cover and talking about how he was going to step up into his big role in season three of Game of Thrones. Oh, or something. shit. That, <laughs> that is dated. I, that's the last time I had a copy. Last time I bought a copy? It had something to do with Primus. Oh, shit. So you're talking probably mid-90s. Mid-late late, 90s? I think late 90s. Yeah, because I was hoping they were going to have a resurgence. It just never happened. Yeah. yeah Ten probably years like later, 90, it did. 98, 99. Yeah. Uh, one more review, and this is uh, not a shocker. Apparently, British people don't know what great grunge is. Right. Uh, the Times... Based out of London, gave it two stars out of that's five. Their, that's their New York Times kind of. That's yeah, well, their they, big well, newspaper. They're all yeah. uh, one more quick thing. Cantrell was a uh, uh, writing credit on the whole album except for So Far Under. That was written by William Duvall. God damn. Well, that's, and that's one of my yeah. favorite tracks. And your favorite track on the album, Red Dryant. Red Dryant. Red Dryant. Red Dryant was written by Cantrell, Mike Inez, and Sean Kenny. Everyone but William Duvall. Wow. And I think that shows. It is. It's that's because you got that classic yeah. fucking Alice in Chains. Never sound. fade was uh, written by William Duvall and Jerry Cantrell. I, I find the ones that really those two collaborated on on the writing yep. are solid as fuck. You fuck can't tell yeah. me there's anything wrong with them. I mean, look, if you don't like Red Giant, you're wrong. But I will. <laughs> but I'll under. I'll understand why you think so. Yeah. And that's because you think it doesn't sound like it's. It sounds out of place with some of the newer tracks. I, I say newer because it does have that older sound to it. Yeah. Again, you're wrong, but I understand why you think right. so. You still uh, sit in a bathtub, fart, and bite the bubbles, but you're <laughs> entitled to your opinion. <laughs> that, that's a classic one, too. That's a classic burn. Uh, yeah. So, Rainier Fog, uh, greatest album of the year. Uh, greatest Alice in Chains album I've heard since Dirt. Yeah, it like I, for me, it's it's the fucking greatest Alice I, in Chains uh, album ever. I mean, it, yo, and if you're a Jerry Cantrell fan, you know from the solo stuff, there are shit. some there's some Easter egg fucking things that are in this. Damn you right, know, some of the licks that they're, they, if, if you never got on board with what Jerry was doing, you know, before they kind of reformed Alice in Chains, you know, right before uh, Black Becomes Blue. Yeah, there are some things in here you might go, Whoo, I recognize that. Yeah, if you if you've listened to Degradation Tip. Trip and can remember anything off of it. You are going to hear some things you're familiar with. Oh yeah. So, oh uh, god damn, I'm I, spent. All right, that's it. Uh, so anyway, hey, thanks for joining us. Hey, <laughs> turn off the music, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. So anyway, it's the uh, <clears throat> Mead Metal and MMA <laughs> podcast. Where we, uh, Good evening, folks. Get together and talk about uh, the three things we kind of dig on: Mead, Metal, and MMA. Uh, how's your week? I'm I'm happy to say it was a normal week for me. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, work was fine. Um Of course I have uh, some vacay time coming up for the Austin trip for Allison Chains. I look at the fucking work schedule and so basically I when I get off the Wednesday morning before we head out a week later, I'm should be off until September 8th and and 9th, 9th. Okay. The Sunday, we can have. Apparently, they couldn't get anyone to cover all of the three goddamn days I work out there, so I have to come back and work the second September second on a Sunday, work that one day. 
Wow. So I'm like, well, shit, if I'm going to come back and do that, just put me back on the schedule because I can work, get off Wednesday morning, go home, take a nap, fucking hit yeah, the road yeah, and still be sure, ready to metal. We're going to be on the road early. Yeah. Oh, well, shit. Well, yeah, not that maybe, early. Maybe not it still works out. But I was like, God damn. Like, uh, what's the point of having vacation when I have to come back and work a day right in the middle of it? Well, it's because you work for, uh, well, you know. I know I work for. <laughs> I was going to say, I. I, I, you can call your bosses assholes. I can't. I, I won't. Assholes. Like my my bosses aren't assholes. They're all just they're just younger than me and and don't plan things right. I uh, can't say too much bad, but like really, it's it's not been a bad week. Yeah. And I've, I I and like now with the week ending with this album coming out, this has probably been a goddamn week of note for me. You know, I got to say, the uh, this was a highlight of the day. The second thing, the highlight of the day was the realization it's Friday. We have a fucking county fair going on, and I have to generally work my balls off for this thing. Right. Knowing that come late in the evening, which is why we're getting out later tonight than usual, that it was the weekend. So weekend's upon me with a fucking awesome album to listen to. Uh, got some friends that are going to be able to get back to doing some of the things. We're uh, kind of into a hobby on Saturdays. Hell we'll be yeah. able to rejoin with them. We have a great fucking fight card coming up tomorrow night. I mean, everything kind of it, it, started stacking like Legos. Yeah, like the perfect storm of a of a banner weekend, you know? Because we always have good weekends because usually nine times out of ten we're drinking beer and, you know, you know, we're here to fuck shit up. But... This weekend has a little something extra behind it. I, I, I'm i digging it, and I'm looking forward to it. Because after after this goddamn week, I'm going to be off except for that one goddamn Sunday. I think it's probably fucking directly relatable to the fucking release. Of yeah, I feel know. like we need to write Jerry Cantrell like a handwritten thank you letter. Uh, yeah. For out of the shitty weeks of music releases we've had to deal with this year, he uh, he finally gave us something that was able to instigate some uh, other good things going on for our weekend. Let's just hope that extends to Justin Gaethje and maybe he really did change his game up. Or James Vick. James Vick. That's uh, uh, the, t- uh, the tech execution. Damn, we're going to be split on that we one anyway. Will, we will be split. <laughs> um, How's your week, my friend? Not bad. Um, like I said, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the fair you know, going on. Well, there, there was a fair last week. In one county, a fair this week because you got to have them slammed back to back so that way you feel like you're covering a state fair, right? You know, <laughs> um, and it's fine. I, you know, and I really, really shouldn't make fun of my fellow man, <laughs> but we do. But the problem is, so they open up like the buildings out there like three o'clock in the afternoon on like a goddamn Wednesday. Well, the only people that are going to be at, at a fair at three p.m. on a Wednesday afternoon. Are going to be the people that well they're 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 on they're on state assistance. You are know? the are the rides even open then? No, I was going to say that shit opens like no, five five thirty, right? Yeah, I, yeah, like uh, like five on yeah most weekdays. I mean, like three, I think tomorrow. I think it might have been three today. I know it's on like, the weekend, like noon tomorrow. So, but anyway, but but yeah, but that's the whole thing. There's like nothing going on, but you know who's out there? The folks that are getting coin from the state. Because they can't really, you know, uh, operate in a normal society. <laughs> but, but there's nothing to do. I know. So then you got them walking around, and it looks like some shit out of fucking like I'm 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 waiting for uh, I'm waiting for the character Daryl from the fucking <laughs> Walking Dead to come barreling in. <laughs> <laughs> I, it sounds wrong. I know it sounds wrong, but uh, it's kind of like that. Uh, yeah, folks, don't get offended. This is the town we live in. No, no, because I've got some more, way more offensive shit coming up in a moment. And nine um, times out of ten, whoever listens to this is f- from within 20 miles of our bubble. You oddly, know what we're talking about. We're on the fucking internet. We should be having people listening in Scotland and fucking Uzbekistan and shit. No, no, I get it. Every once in a while, I get some asshole coming. Hey, man, I listen to you guys all the time. Like, what? YouTube's only promoting us locally. We need to go globally. Yeah. I want to promote everywhere except locally. <laughs> That's, That's right. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's, uh, you know, and like I said, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but but it is weird, though, when you have, like, basically a bunch of people just kind of wandering around. And you're like, I know that guy, and he is getting a check for, uh, uh, let's call it disability. I know that woman. Alleged. She's getting a check because, uh, oh, yep, yeah, that's, uh, you know. And you start looking around, you're like, wait a minute, that's that's all that's out here. That's really weird. It's a little unsettling. Yeah. And then on Thursday, uh, then it's nothing but old people. 
Coming up for the livestock. They have their, uh, their Pioneer Day. Oh. And it's free gate admission. And then so you get some of these people around here on fixed income. And they uh, they go, what? Free admission? <laughs> well, <laughs> we're there. Sa- that saves me $7. And, uh, and on 7 bucks, they can live on fucking peanut butter and dog food like a motherfucker. Pe- I mean, oh, it's crazy. God damn, that sounds horrible. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, okay. Rice and beans. They live on, yeah, that sounds a lot better. They can live on some really, really peanut cheap Peanut butter beans. and dog food. <laughs> um, you know, but I mean, it is. It's, it's, but it's, uh, it, it, so $7 is a crazy amount to them. To me, it's it's crazy amount because, like, fuck, am I going to get 7 bucks out of this? Yep. But for those people, that's that might be about three days worth of meals. Well, then you can also go out to the county fair and buy weaponry, like like switchblades and. Well, they, yeah, they do have your wandering merchants selling like yeah. Confederate flag pins, you know, so we can let everybody know you. It's like go traveling to a village in Skyrim, <laughs> <laughs> kind of without the crazy accent. Yeah, with funnel cake. <laughs> the accent, the accents are actually crazier in some ways, but yeah, yeah shit, right. But um, so yeah, it's just a crazy, crazy time out there, and I'm, I'm thankfully I'm done. I don't have the. I used to have to be out there like from the first day, like a Tuesday, broadcast like seven hours a day out there. God. And on top of my regular job. God damn. From Tuesday through Saturday. Used to. Once upon a time. So Fuck then that I, that was like a fucking 90 something hour week. Jesus. Got to tell you, Kevin gets a little cranky after yep. that many hours. I, I, can, I, I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. So I've got something else that I, uh, well, I was told I was on the wrong side of this. And maybe. Maybe you can let me know. And, it, 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 fuck, I, and I'm, I'm okay with it. If I am on the wrong side of it, I'm all right. Okay. Because I understand my thoughts aren't necessarily congruous with normal society. I get it. I like to think of myself as a keen observer of the human scene, Big Dan. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, okay, so. God, and by the way, my biggest pet peeve is I found out people begin sentences with so, and I found myself doing it a lot. Really? Ever since I determined that <laughs> shit. Ah. And once you hate it, you start doing no, it. You're no, a self-hating, self-hating sower. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, a, so yes, there we go. Then we gotta start that sentence. Come to find out, got um, an acquaintance. I don't know if I'd call him a friend, but it's certainly an acquaintance. Been dating a woman for a very long time. All right. Gave up drinking for this lady. What? Well, because he'd have... Uh, has a little issue once in a while with his drink, you know. And, uh, uh, and usually women will exacerbate that. I say go into a relationship, don't drink when you start, and then start immediately thereafter going, well, I wouldn't have to if it wasn't for some of this shit you're trying to pull. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. I can hear the thumbs up on the video. Oh, oh by the way, yeah, you, you're going to want to hover over the thumbs down and click that shit. <laughs> you people did not listen last week. I don't know. I'm, this might be the one we don't need thumbs down on because I'll feel like they're talking about us change. I'll find out where y'all live wow. and tell you why you're wrong. Jay and Silent Bob style. Dating this chick then, he, um, and then things are fine. She gets a, a malady, right? Something like really, really bad. Like a legit illness or something? Let, let, well, let's, let's call it cancer. Okay. Oh, fuck. Okay. Um, and then he's, but he's very supportive. Yeah. And doing the right thing and um, being a very, very stand up, very good guy. Chivalry is still, still alive. That and type of she thing. breaks up with him, which I immediately fucking kind of lost my mind a little bit. I went, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't, you can't be the person with cancer and break up with a supportive person. It's, it's, it's there, unfortunately supposed to be the other way around, but. Is there, was there a reason? Oh, fuck, there's always a reason. Well, I mean, like, what, did the guy, like, burn their house cat or something? No, no, I, I, I think it's just a matter of just a breakup and, you know. <sighs> but, I, but, but I was the hmm. bad guy for pointing out that the person, and let's just say that, let's just say my friend was a woman and it was a man that had the cancer. In which case I would have said, what? That man has cancer. He can't go breaking up with her. It's the same. I mean, I, I maintain it's the same thing. If you're the one stricken with an illness, you shouldn't be the one breaking up with people, should you? But does it also mean you're obligated to stay with the person? I think you, I think so. I think Seinfeld probably grappled well, with the whole know, thing. It, it depends. Ago. What kind of cancer was it? Uh, 
The, the bad kind? I, I don't know. Well, I, 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 don't, I, yeah, I, I don't know of a good kind. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, I don't, it was the joyous kind. I, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, I mean, if obviously, there was, obviously, I know you're a libertarian at heart when it comes to relationships because, hey, fuck that. You don't want anybody involved with your shit. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, kind, I, I'm a lone wanderer. I get the perk for that on the Fallout 4 chart. Um, uh, like it, it would it would help to know a little more I like can't behind put why much out there because I that's okay yeah but I think like if he fucked her over then yeah legit no, I, 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 but if it was just like if she's trying to find like well I have cancer and now, now I have a I officially have a time limit that I you know that I know what I got left on this on this realm I'm gonna go try to find something a little bit better did your buddy outbat his coverage with this woman I don't know because I think they had a long, long history. So okay, so they were like friends, became lovers, yeah. became became an item. I don't know. It sounded a little more and more fucked up. I'll, I'll say bit. that. That's what I thought. I thought you know, I, I think you have to wait it out until like you get the whole uh, hey, you're. Good I to mean, go. it takes balls to have cancer and then like be be a dick and <laughs> break up with somebody. Yeah, it takes some serious balls. I think it, but I th- I think on the flip side, not, you know, now after careful consideration. That's kind of the real kick in the ass. Is like you know, uh, yeah. A breakup's bad enough. Guess what? <laughs> and, and clearly, there was probably something wrong beforehand. Oh, I'm sure. You know, something. And then the cancer just kind of made it like, oh shit. Well, I need to, I need to shit or get off the pot here. Maybe. But it does still sound fucked up. Cancer, regardless. You, you know, if, if if you're being supportive and everything's going good, and all of a sudden you're kicked to the curb, male or female, that's fucked up. Yeah, man. So, needless to say. He's uh, back to drink it again. So good uh, man. We need him out here on the podcast next week. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe not. He's not. He's not. That's why I, I kind of hesitate. It's like uh, he's a friend. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so it's someone that like I would like to observe rather than interact. He with. is certain. That's <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed it. That's exactly right. <laughs> like a little Discovery Channel shit yeah. going on here. Yeah, it's uh, it's, oh, it's kind of like you know everybody likes to watch Shark Week, but you fucking want to go taking a trip down and jumping in with a bunch of great yeah, whites. Yeah, Nobody's no up for that. Yeah. No shit. God, um, I hope people don't get too uh, too ex- you know like don't get used to us being this stoked on Friday. Sometimes we're gonna be pissed off and need to bitch about stuff. Yeah, usually blame we're, blame we're, Allison Chains. Usually the the the, the Kevin Rage cast usually yeah, does crank I, up. But I was ready, man. I was ready to bitch just for a solid half hour today. Okay, but, no, here's something else I got to pick your brain about then. All right then. Okay, so we all know that. Uh, God damn it, I did it again. So we all know that uh, that Twitter exists. It is a thing. There was something that kind of went back and forth, and I caught it on screenshots that kind of popped up Tuesday night as I was laying around in my own sweat and stink <laughs> and insomnia. Oh, I was going to say, were you looking like at Felice Herrick's Instagram again? This, uh, no. <laughs> I, I had to stop following her. Because uh, cause you pointed out that she's really, really unattractive at times, and I didn't really see it, and then suddenly I started seeing she it. She got all a little the time. bit of a meth mouth. All the time. And I started, ah, I can't, I can't. That's why yeah. I unfollowed Sorry, dude. That's what I do. I ruin things for people. On Twitter, this chick with a, uh, by the way, her avatar is a furry, if this tells you anything. Oh, one of those humans in a dog suit with a dick? Yeah, I guess they have like, a, yeah, they, they all dress up in like mascot suits and fuck each other, right? Uh, it sounds all right. I mean, I'd get behind that if I, I had the had money to do it. I don't know that I'd get behind it, but I certainly am not going to bust your balls for wanting <laughs> to get into it. want to put on this furry suit and bang you with it. Come on now. Come and on. also identifies as a transgender because that's what we do as a society now. If anybody uh, criticizes you, right? Is that, I, oh, I, by the way, I have no. Com- yeah, 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 I, I, I got no comment. She gets on. <laughs> she gets on Twitter. Her name is uh, Naomi. Gets on Twitter. Tweets. Everyone, shut the fuck up. I got accepted for a NASA internship. Okay. Oh, this is sounding vaguely familiar. I feel like I saw this on my computer. Probably. Today. After a Twitter user uh, noted her. Okay. Twitter user gets on there and says, language. Yeah. She responds with, suck my dick and balls. I'm working <laughs> at NASA. So the user that had said language offered that he is Homer Hickam. Oh, yeah. Yep. I remember that. Like, guess what? <laughs> Former NASA engineer, inspiration of the uh, October Sky. Dudes wrote books, but basically put out there that he, uh, you know, Rocket Boys. Yeah. I mean, all this shit. 
basically put down that he is over the agency that is over NASA, and he was trying to look out for her best interest, to which then... NASA don't like it when you say, suck my dick and balls? Well, that's the whole thing, right? So huh. she's, she's pointing out that she had an internship with, and I used that in the past tense, by the way. Oh, she didn't get it out of her that. her friends jump in, her friends jump in, who's this old white motherfucker mansplaining my friend? Oh, my God. Hashtag NASA. Hey, who's the, who the fuck's this guy think he is? Why don't you take your old ass somewhere else? Hashtag NASA. <sighs> Not Homer Hickam, the legend, the, the idol of our <laughs> American space program. No, no. It was her friends that alerted NASA, thanks to their hashtags, and NASA uh, went, you went what? <laughs> and, uh, and guess who no longer has an internship? Uh, well, there's always Whataburger. Well, that's the whole thing. And Homer Hickam is like, well, hold, hold on, and did some looking. He's like, well, she's obviously a bright young lady with a terrible... Terrible. Terrible social skills. Uh, social skills, but ter- terrible d- decision making and uh, yeah. social platforming and uh, horrible friends Oof. and uh, and a whole variety of, of maturity issues. But he's trying to get her internship back. And there are still assholes on Twitter calling him an old cocksucker and everything else. But oh, uh, but her she uh, so she went ahead and locked up her account, made it private and put going away from Twitter for a while. <laughs> So. If you make your Twitter account private, you're not going away from Twitter. You are just making it difficult to see the gibberish coming out of your well, fucking mouth. So, on one hand, I feel like an old bastard by saying, yeah, good, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> make some bad decisions, you pay the price. Hey, we all have to. The other side of me goes, well, you know, some people trying to make the argument, well, it's a private Twitter account. But guess what? When you have an internship with NASA or fucking, uh, or even e- even the city council, an internship on the city council of Sister Polk, Michigan. Yeah, if you're volunteering to be a goddamn lifeguard at your local pool, you probably should watch your shit on social media. Yeah, you can become a lifeguard and say, "Well, can't wait to watch people drown tomorrow." You're probably going to lose your job. What's the right response? The right response would have been, "Hey, uh, you know, everybody, shut the fuck up. I got a cool internship." Yeah. Good day to use. You know, so then they're not hashtagging NASA when Homer Hickam, a legend, fucking goes, hey, language lady. When recreational anger comes back to bite you in the ass and balls. Her bullshit friends cost her her fucking internship, which I think in many ways is great. And I think it's a great lesson. When she's out and she's got, uh, like, popped out fucking seven kids or what. Oh, well, then again, I don't know (laughs) if she has the means because, again, she identifies yeah, it, well, it's it's cheaper and easier to say you identify rather than going through the whole rigmarole of... Uh, Ask uh, Bruce Jenner. Yeah, there you go. Well, I guess she, he, she's got tits, but he's also got a cock. Speaking of a woman that could tell you to suck her dick and balls. <laughs> he was an, uh, she was an Olympian, wasn't she? Oh, God. Uh, shit. All right, we move on. Yes, unless we're good with the uh, wrap of the week. I, I, I think so. I mean, uh, if, we're, if we're talking about solid birthdays, Rob Halford, born 1951 today. Gonna have to jam a little Judas later. Gene yeah, Simmons throw, born throw today. A little, uh, leather. Oh, Gene Simmons, really? Yeah, not gonna uh, listen to any kiss. We ought to, we ought to put together some money so you know to help him celebrate his birthday. That fucking yeah, you asshole. know that guy. That guy has it so difficult. Billy Ray Cyrus born today. Is that the it, uh, character that Billy Bob Thornton played on the? Uh, I believe so. I oh think no, that, no, that's the uh, <laughs> shaky, breaky heart. Or something. You're, you're you're thinking of Miley Cyrus's strange. Fu- well, I don't think Billy Billy Ray Cyrus, Miley Ray Cyrus. Yeah, okay, yeah. there it is. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if Miley had the same name, but uh, in other weirder birthdays, Dave Chappelle born today, forty five. Vincent Kennedy McMahon born today, seventy three. Vince McMahon was born in nineteen seventy three. He is seventy three. Oh okay. god, damn! I was like, there's no fucking way that guy was born in nineteen seventy three. Oh man. And uh, normally we'll chat about the uh, the album releases of the week. Uh, yeah, we already did that. There was only one. The only one that matters. Uh, honorable mention to so, yeah. non-point. Just and, it, and it's the one you know. So. And the funny, yeah, that's funny. That, like, honorable mention to non-point. I would have talked about your album if it came out any other Friday than this one. Well, I, if I can remember, I'll talk about it next week. We might pick it up next week. Yeah. I mean, it's not, uh, not a great album, but I just remember non-point from high school, and I didn't even know they were still together. Uh, yeah, MMA. I have a couple topics that I'd like to just kind of rapid fire at you, get okay. a thought, 
and then we'll move on to tomorrow's card. Uh, let's see, we got here. Tony Ferguson's next fight's been announced. All right. UFC 229, the Conor McGregor card. Al Kakuda's fighting, fighting Anthony Pettis. That should be a good fight. We knew Pettis would probably get that shot. I think I think Pettis. He was making no headway at featherweight. I think Pettis has got a great skill set, and it pains me to kind of say that because I really don't fucking like him or his brother or sister or whatever. He yeah, is, it um, was the system that made us hate him. He was a, he's a great fighter. It's yeah. just the marketing made us hate him. I do think that uh, that Tony Ferguson has got too many weird weapons. If you look at Anthony Pettis' fights, dudes that are a little fucking off kilter and don't fight like normal dudes do, he yeah. has a problem with them. Absolutely. And I think that's directly related to Duke Rufus' training. Yeah. I think Duke Rufus is great. If you're going to fight a standard, a normal stand and punch, or even, a, or even a takedown guy, whatever, as long as it's a very conservative approach to striking and takedowns, I think that probably he was he's able to prepare Anthony yeah. Pettis probably better than anybody could. Now, but if you if see him punk, that ain't going to work. No, but it, but <laughs> if it's some irregular kind of fighting, as we see out of fucking Tony Ferguson, I don't well, think that's... Well, it's going to be weird, because like, Tony Ferguson's kind of weird. He's he, kind of a weird dude. Everything's weird about that guy. It, his fighting style, his personality, all of it's weird. And I like that. I dig that. I mean, he kind of got shafted for blowing his ACL while doing a pirouette in the snow. You know, and then uh, but and now we got fucking Khabib as a goddamn champ. So I blame I blame Tony Ferguson for that. So I want him to go beat Anthony Pettis's ass to make up for it. Yair Rodriguez uh, got fired from the UFC, got signed back. Everything seemed all right. He was going to be fighting at 228 in two weeks. And then, boom, injured out of his fight. Well, because his initial reason why he got fired anyway was because he refused to start ta- he, he was refusing taking fights. Yeah. He, and, he, he took he one, no featherweight fights that were offered to him. Like, all right, then, if you're not going to fight, get the fuck out of here. Right. Uh, he was supposed to fight, goddamn, Zabit Magomed Shapirov. Jesus Christ. A, a plus, check plus to you today. Thank you. Thank you. I, yeah, I, 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 I got to give Jerry Kanchow credit, credit for that as well. Smiley face. And a gold star. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's not push it. So, oh, damn it. Uh, so yeah, you know, fighting to get that job back, get that fucking fight announced, and now you get injured and you're out. You know, I used to have a real high es- high regard and esteem for Yair Rodriguez, but God, not anymore, man. It's tough. The guy's a train wreck, and I'm pretty well done with that. You uh, remember a UFC fighter named Dean Lister? Uh, rings a bell. He's a uh, he's what you would call a UFC veteran. Okay. Uh, kind of the old guard, you know, back in the day, he'd, uh, let's see what, God damn, I can't remember. He, he fought anywhere from middleweight to heavyweight, bigger guy fought last fought at UFC 92 against Yushin Okami. Oh shit. So he's a veteran, not a notable one, <laughs> but he did get his house broken into by a meth head and he recorded it. That's another thing we'll have to watch a little later. Uh, beat the shit and out just of at the what? the picture I'm looking at of this gentleman that broke into his house, it, you're expecting Daryl to come out of nowhere with a goddamn crossbow to hit him right in the dome. Yeah. Like meth supreme. See us we got here. Uh, another fighter you probably never heard of and you won't hear of after this. Bryce Mitchell. Okay. Ultimate Fighter alum. Apparently he was working with a uh, power drill. Oh, boy. Doing I, like, some, I like the way this is going. Doing some home improvement. So I'm just going to read the first two sentences of his Instagram post, and we'll move on. So I was going to train today, but I ripped my nutsack in half. Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> I'm about to get stitched up. I was holding a board over my head with a drill in my pants. I was sizing up the board, and the drill went off and tangled my nuts up in it. Holy shit. I dropped the board and reversed the drill and untangled my nutsack, but they was ripped in half. Jesus. So, uh... Yeah, then he posted a picture of his bloody boxers. Ah, uh, yeah. He's going to be on the shelf for a little bit. I uh, maybe uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe don't worry about a, a holster for your uh, drill. You know, be in the front of your pants. Maybe <laughs> that's the wrong. Time. You're better off putting it in your butthole. That's <laughs> God damn man. Uh, and lastly, um, so we're we're all aware of the John Jones thing. We're about to hear some resolution out of it, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, well. Um, yeah. And he had stated recently that he had never left the USADA testing pool. You, there's a website 
the USADA has where you can go and find out how many times these UFC, MMA, any MMA fighter that USADA tests have been tested during the year. Okay. I typed it up while I was at work the other night, like, UL Romero, 11. That makes sense. Sure. Uh, Brock Lesnar, three times. That kind of makes sense for a fight next year. Already Since been tested yeah. three times. He's got to be in six and he months. Only just recently announced. Yeah. So three times, got to be in the pool six months. That makes sense. John Jones popped up on the list. He's been tested once this year. Oh, wow. For a guy that popped and hasn't had a verdict written on his fate, he's only been tested once. While other fighters have been tested between, the mean seems to be between four and six times this year. Can we extrapolate then off of that that USADA is already? The fix is in. Yeah. Yeah. Already yeah. saying, nope, he ain't, he ain't fighting this year or, or for the next e- year. Either that or they're like, look, we're not going to test him a whole lot because the less we test him, the more the tests come up clean. The, it, USADA might be trying to get John Jones out there without really trying to test John Jones. Or the opposite. I, it's, a, it's really an either or. That's uh, It's kind of weird, though, regardless. Like, one goddamn drug. If you've never left the pool and you're, and you're currently going through the rigmarole of of trying to get your goddamn career back. Now, is it is it maybe because he officially, his status in the pool gets put on hold because of his appeal? I've never heard of that. Because obviously he can't fight, so with an appeal in place. Yeah, but I would still think you would be tested if you don't leave the pool. You have to say you're leaving, you're like retiring or you're leaving the pool like Brock did. Well, the official, but the official stance is, is that due to his failed uh, test that he was removed from competition, but that wouldn't remove you from testing. You wouldn't think so, but may, I don't know. I need to do some more research on this. Yeah, the, I'll, I'll give you that website where you can check that shit out. It's pretty interesting because I know I I can I can probably get a hold of Ian McCall and try to find out why that is. Yeah, because it's, it's it really befuddles me. Because it's either a really good thing for John Jones or a really bad thing. Yeah. And one way or the other, it, it sounds like there's some weird shit going on where, uh, quote unquote, the fix is in. Yeah, like USADA in cahoots or USADA trying to keep John Jones out of the game. Either yeah. way, it doesn't. It reeks of 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 shit. Yeah. No, not good. Uh, so we will move on, and, and we've covered this card because I thought it was gonna be happening two <laughs> weeks ago. Uh, so we will briefly go through. Uh, your preliminary main event, which we probably won't catch, but I- I'm curious to see who wins it just because of one fighter, Joanne Calderwood, fighting yeah. out of Scotland, fighting Kalindra Faria, both fighters making weight. She's Everyone made weight, by the way. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, Calderwood's got to make weight uh, or, or got to make uh, this fight kind of a, a signature thing. And she's got to yeah. really put her mark on she it. she got to jump. I think she's uh, in danger of. I love Joanne Calder. Oh, no, absolutely. I, I think she's adorable. That fucking voice could read me stories every night. But she, uh, she's in need of a win. Well, I'll give her this. At the weigh-in, I saw the face-offs for the weigh-ins, and she looked all business. First okay. time ever. First time ever. She looks pretty withered. Yeah, like withered and like, oh, I'm just here to have fun. You know, right. thing. She, was, she looked like she was ready to kill someone. Uh, Mickey Gall fighting George Sullivan. Mickey Gall. Of course, CM Punk fame, and uh, uh, bigger than that, Sage Northcutt fame, fighting George Sullivan. Eh, I got Mickey Gall in this, but it's not really a fight that interests me. Right. Your main event for the preliminary card is going to be Worley Alves fighting James Krause at welterweight. I'd pick James Krause if he's fighting anybody but Worley Alves. Yeah, Worley's kind of on a run right now. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's a knockout machine. Yeah. And you move on to your main card. Uh, you got Brian Barberina fighting Jake Ellenberger, returning Jake Ellenberger. They got put into the goddamn stratosphere from an elbow via Mike Perry. Yeah. I, I think he gets finished by Barberina, and we see him hang it up. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of Barberina and uh, from the way he looked in a fight three years ago, probably, but two years, three years ago. I think he's actually got a lot of the holes in his game kind of figured out. Yeah. Ellenberger is... Uh, he is battered, man. He is broken, beaten, and a, scarred. He is a veteran. <laughs> yes, in every sense of the word. Uh, your co-main is going to be Andre Touchy Feely fighting uh, Michael Johnson at featherweight. Michael Johnson cutting 10 pounds to try to get back on track after that Justin Gaethje fight at lightweight. What? Do you know what he looked like at the weigh-in or no? Uh, he looked pretty Conor McGregor-ish at featherweight, yeah. if you know what I mean. I like Feely in that fight then. Yeah. 
I, I, I think Michael Johnson was doing great at lightweight until he met Justin Gaethje, and then it all just kind of fell apart yeah, after that. Don't go ahead and burn down the barn. You yeah, know I mean, right. you try to fix what you got. And, and you can't stand in, in exchange with Gaethje. Now, granted, Gaethje's biggest advantage was the fact nobody knew who the fuck he was. Yeah, unless you watch World Series of Fighting. Um, you know, but which so is Michael now a professional fought, fight league, I think. And Michael Johnson had the advantage of him for a very long time. In that yeah, fight, Michael but, Johnson you know. was a, a ranked number seven in lightweight. So, which yeah. is considered the most stacked division in the UFC. Trying to make that cut, I, I, and I'm not a huge Feely guy because that guy does lose a lot of fights. But right. man, it should be um, it should be a pretty good scrap. But I think Feely's going to beat an emaciated Michael Johnson, probably, and probably by decision. Oddly enough, yo main event of the evening: Justin Gaethje fighting James Thick in Lincoln, Nebraska. Ta- executioner all the way. I, uh, I, I'd pick. James Vick, if I didn't see Justin Gaethje fight Michael Johnson. I have to be honest. Well, it's not because I think uh, Gaethje's a better fighter. I just like him, and I want him to win. I could see James Vick wrapping this up in under two rounds, uh, but I would like to see Justin Gaethje do leg kick supreme and hopefully wrap this up in under 15 minutes. I think Vick's going to take, take advantage of the uh, really of that reach difference. And yeah. I think that he is and it's probably... There. He's probably going to be able to touch him up a little bit. Those fucking crazy head kicks that that guy throws once in a while will force Gaethje to have yeah. to bring it in. Because Gaethje's really just had to deal with fists. He hasn't really had to deal with leg kick or kicks to the head, yeah. you know? And he's going to have to bring it in close. And when you start doing that, that's when James Vick starts taking motherfuckers yeah. down. And if Gaethje did, I, I'm curious to see if he tweaked his game. If he did, if we see a different Justin Gaethje, I'm going to feel a lot better about his chances. If we see the same one that fought Poirier and Alvarez, it's going to be a bad night. I think that's who we have, though. I think I think yeah. the guy is who he is. I mean, he's going to get another fifty grand for a fight of the night, more than likely. Maybe, but you know, God, if he doesn't get knocked the fuck out, yeah, if he get or, knocked the fuck out or, late or in the second tap, round, or have to tap. I mean, let's not forget James Vick's big game is yeah, on the ground a lot. But and Gaethje's a pretty good wrestler. So, I mean, I, I don't That's know about the ground. Say. You rarely see it. Yeah, it never it. goes to the it's ground. Like, it's like people tell me, oh, yeah, Rumble used to be a junior college champ, you know. His wrestling Was that before or after he started knocking fools out? It's like, man, I don't buy it. Until I see it, I don't buy it. I agree. So. I agree. We might see it tomorrow. Who knows? All right. Well, man, this has been a damn good one. Yeah. I think we should go uh, listen to some metal. I think we got some music to listen to. You goddamn uh, right. Throwing that uh, Rainier Fog back on. And uh, Hey, by the way, thanks for joining us on the show today. I don't know. Like I said, I know I'm uh, not not exactly the uh, most well thought out person in the world. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And by the way, real quick, because I forgot, random random question of the week: favorite character actor? Uh, Donald Cerrone as a fighter. <laughs> when he's not drowning in a hole in the ocean. Yeah. Crazy shit. By the way, yeah. follow his uh, Instagram shit. He's uh, got yeah. some crazy stuff. No, on not there. if you're a fight fan, though. If you're just a fan of seeing <laughs> a guy wanting to kill himself on the ra- on the daily, I'd go to Steve Buscemi. For best character, character actor. actor um, I like Steve. Start putting me into a god damn it, uh, kind of a difficult a little step up from magician. Uh, yeah, <laughs> man, you know, um, I think I've got it, man. Who um, Don Knotts? Yes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now I want to watch uh, Apple Dumpling Gang. You know, I think. Um, God, so. Would you consider character? Bruce Campbell a character actor? No, not really, because he's a kind of a B-lister sort of a. You know, I would say probably Jeff Bridges. Ah, uh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Mainly because, man, I don't know of a role that guy can't play. Yeah, he's done it all. Yeah. Dude was in Tron. Yeah, dude was in Big Lebowski. <laughs> Dude was in, uh, I mean, it, you look at uh, the variety of roles that he's taken yeah. as an actor. And that country movie I can never remember the name of. Yeah. Um, Broken Heart or, or I, I Crazy Heart. Had, crazy, crazy Heart. Crazy Heart, yeah. Crazy Heart, yes. I would have had it if yes. you hadn't said Broken Heart. I was like, ah, shit. God damn, that was bothering me for weeks. Um, yeah, no, I'd go Jeff Bridges probably. I think that's a solid choice. I'd like to see Jeff Bridges and Steve Buscemi in like a buddy comedy. It, well, I don't know. I, I will say this is that I know Steve Buscemi's probably one of the busiest dudes in Hollywood. Fuck yeah. Well, that's why that's, he looks weird and he can act weird, but he can do anything. Let's not forget he was Luke and um, was Luke or Luke's partner and uh, the uh, Lonesome Dove. Yeah. The and Hunter. also in Big Lebowski. Buffalo Hunter. Well, I just want to marry you <laughs> for a little bit. Oh, ugh. 
<laughs> Let's put on some fucking rock. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, again, hope did not offend, but if it did, well, go fuck yourself. Um, the uh, thumbs <laughs> We're down. We're quoting there. Iron Sheik all day today. All day. Well, no, or, or Bill Burr or anybody else yeah. that tells people to go fuck themselves. Uh, but anyway, the uh, get out and buy that record. It's a great record. All I am is probably the. Uh, oh goddamn! Yeah. Good choice. That's where we're going to close it out. Uh, have a great week. Normal show next week, and then on the road after that. So, don't go out. Uh, don't don't go out diddling people that don't want you to diddle them, men and women. Ask Look, first, people. Talk Ask about first. you, Asia Argento. Take no for an answer, you murdering bitch. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Goddamn. I know. Big up. <laughs>